I was devastated and I was, I was disappointed because I'd gone there having been injured at the start of the season and thinking, oh no, that's my Olympic year in tatters. I'd actually gone there in really good shape, knowing that I was capable of winning a medal. It wasn't like I hadn't given everything that I could have given on the day. Um, I was just beaten by three better athletes on the day. I felt, you know, in the last lap I could I was watching the race rather than concentrating on getting myself to the finish. But yet these four girls were fighting it out for three medals and um, I felt I was watching the screen and I just felt that, you know, she she probably should have got a medal, but um, you know, you just kind of feel sorry for somebody who puts in so much work and tries so hard. Paula Radcliffe's gutsy performance in the women's 10,000 metres final in Sydney was one of the enduring moments of the 2000 Olympics. Her valiant front running failed to capture a medal, but won the admiration of spectators and fellow athletes alike. But this year, Paula is making a determined effort to shed the nearly woman image. This is the Lake de Blues. I like to come here um, after a hard session to ice my legs a little bit to help me recover for the next session. But it's also it's a really nice place to, to come and stand and um, see what the mountains are really like all around here and why it's so easy really to come and train here. For Paula and husband Gary, the high altitude training camp of Font Romeu in southwest France has been the base from which Paula has planned her competitive season. For the last six years, the mountain resort has become more than just a training location. I first discovered um, here in, in 1995 when I was on my year out from university because I was studying languages. Um, so I chose to come here for half of the year and lived in the centre for six months and learnt a lot about altitude training but really fell in love with the place. Born in 1973, Paula can count on an Olympic medal winning great aunt for inspiration, but the seeds of her own success were sown on English playing fields. I can remember quite a lot of the sports days. I can always remember um, silly things like my mum used to say that I was so clumsy as a kid, but I always used to win the egg and spoon race and she didn't know how I ever managed to do that. The awkward girl in the egg and spoon race has now set seven Commonwealth and UK records in the 3,000, 5,000 and 10,000 metres. She's won silver in the 10,000 metres at the 1999 World Athletics Championships and is now a major force on the cross-country scene. But in all that time, her tactics have never wavered. Paula Radcliffe attacks from the front, no matter what the cost. I'm not very comfortable sat in the middle of a group, um, so sometimes it's almost better just to get out and just to be able to run my own pace and just to stretch out. Uh, I think some of it also is the fact that because I'm slightly slower at the finish than maybe a couple of people, but I tend to get told over and over again that I don't have a sprint finish. Um, the fact that that's in my mind and I'm thinking oh, I need to get out there early and do something earlier tends to be an issue as well. Her pace setting and style have made Paula one of the most recognisable runners in athletics. Described as ungainly by some, her action is most reminiscent of Emil Zatopek's. The style didn't stop the legendary Czech distance runner from winning four Olympic gold medals and doesn't bother Paula. I've always run like that. I've always nodded my head. Um, I actually started rolling my eyes back for the first time when I first came here in 1995 and I think that was just a reaction that I developed to maybe just push the pain back that little bit further and just to push my body a little bit further. And it's, it's kind of like I go into my comfort zone, I roll my eyes back and... I can forget about it then and just push myself harder. Um, I, I know that maybe when I'm running sub-maximal, I don't roll my head so much and I probably look like a more conventional runner, um, but it's not something that I've really worked too hard to try and stop because it doesn't actually inhibit my running in any way. But neither style, tactics or alleged sprinting weakness have been an issue this season. At the World Cross Country Championships, an event at which she's previously won two silvers and a bronze, Paula battled it out with Getiwami to earn the gold medal. It was a performance which has marked her out as a favourite for this August's World Athletics Championships. 
The main aim definitely for this year is the 10,000 metres in Edmonton. Um, I'd really like to go one better than the, the silver medal that I won in um, Seville. Um, and I'd also like to run fast there, although that's not the main aim for going there. It's really a big aim of mine to maybe try and sort of win a, a world title on all three surfaces. And so I'm holding the road and the cross country and it's just like, I just need one more to complete the set. This is um, my favourite little coffee shop. It's really nice to come here in the afternoon, have a nice cup of coffee, and if we've had a hard session in the morning, have a little treat here, because I think the lady thinks we need feeding up. We get gigantic portions of tart au pomme or crêpe au chocolat, and it refuels you ready for the next session. Recharged by French delicacies, Paula finds herself in the form of her life, whether it be across country, road, or on the track. The World Championships beckon.